Hey guys, Vulcan here and welcome to another episode of History Behind the Warrior. Today we're going to be talking about Reptile. Now as always, spoilers ahead. Pre-Mortal Combat Reptile is a Saurian that originally comes from Zartera and Outworld. Now Saurians go by many names such as Raptors and just Zartarians in general. Saurians are reptilian in nature and they've actually evolved from dinosaurs except they have much larger brains so they're quite smart for what they are. However, Reptile's a great example of this because he's smart, however he still retains some of his animal instincts so he's still somewhat quite primitive. Saurians also have the ability to alter their physical body so they can become invisible or look slightly human. Now I'm going to be going over the history of the Saurians and it's actually quite a bad dark history for this race of reptiles. The Saurians originally came from Earthrealm where they lived for thousands of years. However, their age came to an end when there was a war amongst the Elder Gods. The Saurians managed to flee the devastation and left to another realm called Zartera, where they attempt to rebuild their own civilization. However, like all societies, it must all eventually fall. And this would happen when Shao Kahn would invade Zartera and conquer it. In the process of conquering it, the realms began to merge and eventually most of the Zartarians became extinct. The only two survivors of them were Reptile and Chameleon. The two of them would serve Shao Kahn, with having the intention of betraying him and getting their revenge for the extermination of the Saurian race. But now let's start the video properly. Mortal Kombat Reptile appears for the first time in Mortal Kombat 1, being this fateful protector of Shang Tsung. Being a master of stealth, he always stayed hidden and constantly watched Shang Tsung. Reptile rarely ever fought but was an exceptional fighter when he did. His fighting style was so unique from the other combatants that he was just a genuinely different type of fighter. Now that you guys know that he doesn't really appear as a playable character so he doesn't really have too much of a backstory to him at this point but as we later progress we start to learn more about Reptile and the fact that he actually starts to de-evolve so he comes from this kind of ninja green guy and he starts to slowly become more and more reptilian. Mortal Kombat 2 Reptile returns and still is protecting Shang Tsung. Reptile would go on to receive special missions from Shao Kahn himself, who would promise to release the remaining members of his race from slavery if he unquestionably do his bidding. Once again he does have a really short story and that's where it ends for Mortal Kombat 2. Mortal Kombat 3 An opportunity arose when Katana had escaped into an unknown region of Earthrealm during Shao Kahn's invasion. Having the opportunity to save his race, Reptile immediately jumped into the idea of saving it. Reptile and Jade were sent by Shao Kahn to find out the location of Katana, and if so, kill her. He did not succeed as Jade betrayed him to help Katana. After the war was over, Shao Kahn was defeated and both Earthrealm and Adenia were free. Reptile was brought back as a prisoner to Adenia, and tried there for genocide. It's a somewhat bitter irony since his own race was a victim of the very same act. Reptile was then exiled to the Never Realm. Mortal Kombat 4 During this time, Shinnok is released from his amulet, and Reptile jumps at the opportunity to join Shinnok's army of darkness as a commander, with hope that Shinnok will revive his Saurian race. After being on the losing side once more, he escaped to Outworld again and rejoined his old master Shao Kahn, in spite of the fact that neither of them had kept their promises towards him. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance Due to his separation from his race for such a long time, including his matriarch, Reptile began to show signs of de-evolution. And this starts to be seen by people, because of course, Reptile used to wear a mask. However, this proved no longer possible. Reptile had nearly gone completely insane and had a significant change in his appearance, including a tail now. With the armies of Adenia and Outworld locked in combat, Shao Kahn requested the services of the sorcerer Shang Tsung. Reptile was then sent to get Shang Tsung. However, he was spying on them as he overheard Shang Tsung and Quan Shi talk about forming the Deadly Alliance and plotting to kill Shao Kahn. On his way back to inform Shao Kahn, he was distracted by Natara who revealed to him knowledge of his lost civilization. She gave him the Kayahashi Blade which was an artifact of the Zaterian civilization as proof and revealed to Reptile the location of Katana's forces. Reptile knowing this knowledge would greatly aid Shao Kahn in the war with Edenia raced back to tell the Emperor, however by the time he got there, Shao Kahn was laying dead on the floor, becoming the first victim of the deadly alliance. Mortal Kombat Deception Desperate and lonely Reptile wandered Outworld aimlessly until he came across Natara once again. Desperate for a new master, Reptile declared his loyalty to Natara, 
However, unknown to Reptile, he has always been merely a pawn in Natara's plan to free her people's realm from the outworld. Her first plan was to distract Reptile long enough for the Deadly Alliance to kill Shao Kahn. Next, she manipulated Reptile and the Cyber Ninja Cyrax into battle. Reptile came to realise that Natara had played him the entire time, and that her plan had led to the death of his master Shao Kahn. In rage, Reptile tracked the vampire and Cyrax to the lava chamber, but it was too late. The two had acquired the portal sphere, and it had been destroyed, and in turn Natara and Cyrax would disappear. All that remained was a fully incubated dragon egg. The egg hatched and a beam of light struck Reptile, and Reptile's body became the vessel for the reincarnated Dragon King, Onaga. Mortal Kombat Armageddon Reptile's separation from Onaga was seemingly explained in Nightwolf's ending in Deception, whereupon he bound Onaga's soul to the Never Realm, where he is seemingly lifeless after being knocked out by Sejenko. Reptile is then next seen encountered by Taven in the Conquest mode in the lair of the Red Dragon Clan. Though no explanation is offered as why he's there, it's possible that Reptile's DNA is also being used along with Dagon's dragon, Karo, as a means of creating human-reptilian hybrids since the Red Dragon hybrids do bear some resemblance to Reptile, and can also spit acid. In kind of a weird way, in Reptile's eyes this could be seen as him reviving the Saurian race. However, not long after, Taven defeats Reptile in a fight and releases Karo. Reptile is later seen joining the forces of darkness and is actually killed during the final battle. But now we come to the reboot of Mortal Kombat again. We find out that Reptile fights for Outworld against Earthrealm in the 10th Mortal Kombat tournament. He's first seen fighting Johnny Cage in Johnny Cage's chapter, but does eventually lose to the movie star. After the end of the first tournament, Reptile, Baraka and Katana bring Shang Tsung to Shao Kahn, the Emperor of Outworld. Reptile's next seen in the Living Forest, while Kano and Shang Tsung prepare to make a deal over Black Dragon firearms. Smoke arrives and Kano decides to engage him, however he does lose. Shang Tsung then morphs into the Elder Sub-Zero and teams up with Reptile to face Smoke in a 2 on 1 fight. However, the Lin Kuei assassin manages to beat both of them. When the younger Sub-Zero demands to face Scorpion, he is instead forced to fight Reptile, and emerges victorious against the Reptilian Ninja. Reptile then appears during the Earth Realm invasion, scaling a building which police officers Curtis Stryker and Cabal are on top of. Reptile dodges all the bullets fired at him and spits acid at Cabal, incapacitating him. Stryker then battles Reptile and defeats him. After losing to Stryker, he's not seen again in Mortal Kombat 9. Now once more we're gonna dive into the comics. We find out that Reptile was ordered by Shao Kahn to participate in Shang Tsung's tournament in Earthrealm. We also find out that Shao Kahn expresses doubts over the sorcerer's true intentions. Reptile believed he was only to spy on Shang Tsung, but Shao Kahn ordered him to do whatever he must to ensure Outworld's victory. Though Reptile intended not to compete, he dreamed of winning and possibly discovering a way to bring back his people. Unfortunately for Reptile, he lost his first match against Johnny Cage and continued to lose afterwards. Reptile was no longer welcome in the Emperor's presence for his failures, and Reptile then understood that it meant sleeping with one eye open all the time. Reptile's concerns proved true as he sensed the presence of an assassin in his chambers one night, the Oztec warrior Kotal. However, Kotal chose not to kill Reptile that night and instead left. The next day, Reptile was invited to the throne room by Shao Kahn, who introduced him to his new commander, Kotal. As the Emperor expressed his reservation about Kotal's decision, Reptile knelt before his new commander. Reptile is first seen in Raiden's vision, standing close to Kotal and Ferator. Reptile is then seen again watching Kotal give a speech to the inhabitants of Outworld, standing by Devora and Eren Black. Reptile is still close to the Emperor's side after Kotal declares to Outworld inhabitants that his father, Kotal Ketz, is on a mission to hunt down the traitors of the Empire. Reptile accompanies Ketz and a band of warriors to the Golden Desert to face Reiko and Melina. Reptile witnesses the clouds suddenly block out the sun, and is visibly surprised as he soon realises that the Red Dragon has slaughtered most of their forces. In a shocking turn, Goro would betray Kotal Ketz and murder him. Reptile escapes and informs Kotal Khan of his father's death at Goro's hands, as well as the Red Dragon involvement. Reptile is then revealed to have followed Kotal Khan to the Gold Desert, using his invisibility to hide himself as well as Devora and Ferro and Tor. They engage the Red Dragon mercenaries as Kotal Khan fights Goro, and humiliates him in single combat. Later, after burning the hideout to the ground, Reptile informs Kotal of Melina's and Reiko's escape. 
Reptile is the first to come to Kotal's defense after the Emperor is shot by Sonya Blade. Enraged at Sonya Blade, Reptile attempts to strike her down with his tongue, but the organ is caught by Johnny Cage, who defuses the situation. It is determined that Erin Black was working with the Black Dragon to kidnap Cassie Cage and not follow Kotal's orders. The Emperor then orders Reptile and Devorah to take Sonya and Johnny to the Northern Trade Route where Erin Black is. They are all shocked when they discover Erin Black's bloody and beaten form tied to a treetop, in which then Black tells them what happened between the Black and the Red Dragon Clan, as well as the kidnapped girl's locations. Reptile stands by the Emperor along with the rest of his chosen warriors as Kotal Khan reprimands Erin Black for his actions. After this, Reptile is ordered with Devorah to take Black to his prison cell. Reptile is at Kotal's side as the Emperor observes the Shokan and Oni Warlord hordes outside of Zunkara's walls. After Devorah and Feron Tor depart the parlay with Kintaro, Reptile informs his Emperor that the warriors are ready no matter what the outcome, and tells Kotal that the Earth Roamers are proving very useful at their side. During the final battle of the Shokan siege, Reptile saves Devorah's life when she's nearly attacked from behind by Shokan, snapping its neck whilst being invisible before losing its camouflage. He tells Devora they must regroup with Ferro and Tor when the duo are knocked across the field unconscious. Reptile and Devora are then confronted by a monstrous mutant Oni warlord with two heads. Reptile is then injured by the beast before it's ultimately killed by Devora, and Kotal Khan kills King Gorbak. Reptile is carried by Devora over to Kotal Khan after the Shokan retreat and the Emperor orders him to take to the infirmary to be treated for the rest of his wounds. Reptile reveals he knew Kotal was the one assigned to kill him for failing Shao Kahn so many times in the past. Reptile asks why Kotal spared him, after Kotal tells him his skills as a spy were too valuable to throw away in death matches, Reptile says that Kotal saw value where Shao Kahn had not. Reptile tries to tell his emperor that his life has no value, even without his family, but Kotal refuses to listen. After each of Kotal's warriors tell their own stories about Kotal Khan, the capital suddenly shakes fiercely, and Reptile witnesses the arrival of the Black Dragon Warriors. That's what we're really up to in the comics so far. I know there's a little bit more right now, but I want to choose to explore that at a later date. I want to do the entire thing when it's all done and dusted. Mortal Kombat X Five years before the story, Reptile seems to be the first ally of Kotal Khan, and the two of them approach Devora, asking her to assist them in overthrowing the Empress Melina. Moments later, Melina, Ermac, Baraka and several Tarkatans enter the room and confront the trio, accusing them of treason. Reptile then reveals to the room that he saw how Melina was constructed in Shang Tsung's flesh pits and is not the actual daughter of Shao Kahn, and is henceforth not the rightful heir to the throne. Outraged by Reptile's outburst, Melina orders her men to kill the usurpers, however, Ermac soon betrays Melina and joins the usurpers. After Devorah kills Baraka and the rest of the Tarkatans are defeated, Kotal orders Melina to be locked up and thus begins his reign as the new Emperor of Outworld. Reptile along with Eren Black and Ermac is next seen investigating the bodies left by Devorah after she's betrayed Outworld by stealing Shinnok's amulet. Due to Reptile's superior smelling senses, he's able to find out that Cassie, Jackie, Takeda and Kung Jin are spying on them. He then engages Takeda in combat, using his invisibility to fight him but Takeda uses his telepathy to locate him before he strikes, and Reptile and his comrades are incapacitated by the Earth Realmers. After being defeated, the three of them go to Kotal Khan and report that Devora is gone with the amulet, and they believe she is working with the Earth Realmers. Furious, Kotal Khan declares war on Earth Realm and tells his men to ready the army. Kotal Khan, Reptile, Ermac, Ferator, and Eren Black then lead dozens of soldiers through a portal to Earth Realm and meet up with the four Earth Roamers who happen to crash land in the area, which so luckily just happens to be Cassie, Jackie, Takeda and Kung Jin. The Earth Roamers run away from the army and later ambush them with guerrilla tactics. Reptile quickly dodges most of the attacks and climbs the trees, and then pounces on Jackie. When Takeda attempts to stop him, Reptile spits acid in his eyes, temporarily blinding him. Jackie manages to break free of Reptile's grasp and defeats him. However, the Earth Roamers are overrun by the superior numbers of the Outworld army. When Kotal Khan announces that he will have all their heads as a peace treaty for Shinnok to spare Outworld, the Lin Kuei then attack. The fate of Reptile and the rest of his companions are unknown at this point, but it's most likely that they escape back to Outworld. And that's really kind of the end guys, thank you for being so patient with me with this one because I was supposed to release this on Monday, but um, 
Just in case some of you don't know, I'm actually partnered right now. Which is super goddamn cool, but it was a lot of hassle and I actually got pretty aggravated about getting it all sorted out. Now, on my own personal thoughts on Reptile, I actually found this really interesting because I didn't know this much about Reptile. I thought, like, I knew about the whole race thing, but I didn't know it to this much of a degree. And I do have to admit, I'm actually quite happy I covered him because he actually has quite an interesting history behind him. Anyway, this comes to the conclusion of the video, but I think it's time to give you a little show of who's coming up next. We are Ermac. As are we. There can be only one. That's right guys, Ermac is arriving at History Behind the Warrior next week. Now as always, please like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.